Billionaire and former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, just bankrolled a new startup to make an AI scientist. What does it mean for human scientists? If you are a top performer, you will get more done and make more money. If you suck, you might lose your job. Here is the mission statement of the startup called Future House. Our 10-year mission is to build semi-autonomous AIs that can scale scientific research, to accelerate the pace of discovery, and to provide worldwide access to cutting-edge scientific, medical, and engineering expertise. So far, there is very little published information. A blog post on the official website, a short article on Bloomberg, a 10-minute video on Bloomberg with the CEO, and some Twitter posts from the key people. All links are below. Here are the few things that stood out to me. The initial focus will be on biology, since they think that's where they can have the most impact. In biology, computation and automation are advanced. Humans are the bottleneck. They're also planning to build a wet lab, which is an interesting choice since it can eat up a lot of their budget. The key point is they believe everything that is needed is available right now. So what is needed to make this happen? Just like with any AI systems, you need three things. First, data. Second, model architecture. Third, powerful computers. Compute power is just a question of money. And since they are well-funded, this will not be a problem. It is pretty straightforward what data are needed. You need scientific literature, journal articles, textbooks, and ideally even lab notebooks. The vast majority of journal articles are already available as PDFs. The issue is with copyright. Are the authors and or publishers going to object or the government that funded the research? These issues are popping up with image generators like DALI and Midjourney. The exciting part, what model architecture to use? Let me give you an example. Here is a handwritten task you need to buy 17 computers. Each computer costs $1,347. The sales tax is 8.82%. How much sales tax are you going to pay? What is hard about this task? For humans, it is to multiply those three numbers since they're not round. For a computer, $2 calculator from Walmart can multiply those three numbers. But first, you need a decent convolutional neural network to convert the image to text, and then a large language model to figure out what you need to do. And this is why all these projects are popping off in 2023. Until now, it was hard for computers to interpret text. That is now easy with GPT-4. And tasks that are difficult for humans, like doing a literature search on 100 articles, can be easy for computers. There are two options on how to set up the model architecture. First, use the large language model like a project manager and build tools for it that the large language models can then reference. This strategy was employed in the ChemCrow paper. Check out that video if you're interested. The second strategy would be to open up the large language models, use transfer learning, and retrain the last few layers with scientific data. I think the first approach is much better and likely what they will use since Andrew White, one of the senior authors on the ChemCrow paper, is the head of science at Future House. One huge advantage of this approach is that as new, more advanced LLMs are available, you can just plug them in your AI scientist to make it constantly better. What does it mean for the job market? If you are a talented scientist with a lot of creative ideas and are currently held back with the more mundane tasks like literature research, data analysis, and report writing, then you are likely to hugely benefit from an AI scientist assistant. Unfortunately, if you are a mediocre performer whose job is to do boring tasks like writing SOPs, protocols, and unnecessarily long reports, then your job security might be at risk. This will not happen overnight, so subscribe for tips on how to prepare for the AI future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.